tell you what, my mimosa sure does like all this weather. That thing has got tons of little pink blooms on it. Hummingbirds flock to that, and you can see them out here during the spring and summer. They just go crazy over that. Well, it's 9, uh, 9 15, 9 20 in the morning out here. And it has been thundering and lightning and raining like I'll get out all night long. And that is no sound effect. It's a nervous dog. Are you nervous, Prudence? <laughs> Are you nervous? What's up, Apollo? <laughs> Tropical storm is wreaking havoc on uh, Alabama and Georgia right now. Mm -hmm. I'm back 430 humidity is off the chain out here you can still hear some thunder toward the northeast um, we are down to 20% so I'm hoping that that is done and I can get to rocking with the episode as you can see I've got the Camry up here and that's what we're gonna be camping out of um, we're gonna be using the same setup that I used in Savannah Georgia for my stay down there for uh, going to grad school and so I'm going to go ahead and start breaking that stuff out or I'll show it to you first and then I'll get it set up. When I get out and do long distance camping, I like to carry um, a few things with me to kind of make my life a little bit more comfortable. You can see I've got a milk crate back here. I usually have two of those, but right now I've just got the one and I've got some of the, the kitchen stuff that I use in it, my journal, um, my little uh, man cave bag. Uh, although the one that I used for Savannah was not the same kind. It's essentially the same kind of kit. Behind the milk crate, you can see a roaster pan, and I've got some kindling in it, and there's a drill in there, and uh, just a few tools that maybe I can't fit into that toolbox that's beside it. Now, I don't know if you can see that toolbox, but it's just right behind that green cooler, and um, that's got your standard tools that if I were to break down on the side of the road or had to do some sort of emergency repair, I could, I could get that handled. Now, in front of the toolbox you saw was the cooler. Now, that cooler, I would put... Um, usually just a few drinks in, a little bit of food, and I would not rely on it to kind of be my main source of food. Now the food bucket I keep in the back seat along with the table. Um, that's some stuff that I can easily get to. And then of course the, the kitchen right here is, is easily accessible. Beside the cooler I've got the guide chair that we like to use. Uh, I did not use my stool on that. I knew I would be down there for that first trip for two weeks. And so I went ahead and brought this um, you know, heavy duty chair that I like to use. And beside that is my sleep system. That's tarping the snake skins, the Eno hammock, and then the snug pack cocoon. I didn't have a heavy duty sleeping bag down there because it's in South Georgia and you know, you're down there roasting already. In the back, I got the food bag and I've got my table. And then in the front, I would have my clothes that I would carry. I would also have my computer bag and then maybe a few odds and ends, a, a drink, something like that. But there's this one piece of kit here that I wanted to show you. This is a little um, uh, Best Tech uh, power inverter uh, that I bought for doing these trips because it gives me a way that I can run my computer or a printer off of the car. If I have any other kind of household gadgets that are able to be run off of something that size, I can you know, be pretty comfortable that I've got a way to charge them like my LED lantern that I'll be using tonight is the lantern that I used when I went down on that first trip and when I would go out to camp I wouldn't have access to any kind of power and so when I would charge my phone and my computer uh, I would also try to grab a quick charge uh, uh, for that lantern now I would charge the phone on the standard charger because this car has got a couple of power ports that allow you to charge multiple stuff at one time but uh, I always tried to Make sure I had a, that power inverter with me no matter which vehicle I was in. Although most of the time I just keep it in the car. All right, so you can see with a car, it's a whole different ball game than it is with that truck. I could pack everything in that truck and be good to go and, and hit the road gold panning. With a car, it's a whole different situation. I got limited space. I'm kind of on a long distance mission. Camping is not the objective, even though it's what I'm doing. 
uh, it's, it's a way to get me into a place and stay uh, inexpensive and go get the job done or go to school or do whatever I got to do. And well, and plus I get to be out in something like this, right? I'd much rather be out in this than I had in the city. The reason I like camping at the state parks is because it allows me to stay in nature and, but yet it gives me the ability to use a very fuel efficient vehicle. It gives you a bathhouse. You've got kind of some of the conveniences of home and on some of the more uh, upscale sites, you've actually got electricity and running water. So that helps out. Got my table set up for the review for tonight. Got my chair turned up so I'll keep the cat and the chicken out of it. Cooler set. And I hung my mosquito net. So I tied out my northeast side to a redbud and my southeast side to a pecan. And on my southwest, I tied out to the other side of the pecan. And then I went down and I tied out to a pig on the northwest. Now before I put the net on, this thing was nice and tight and was sticking straight out. But because I've got the net tied, what it's wanna do is pull in toward the middle. I think once I loose the sides, once I release the ties here, this sag will drop out. I'll, I'm gonna check that here in a little while, but I'm just gonna leave it up for the moment. I wanna show you guys something. I think that's tree ear, and I've never seen it look so good. This is a pecan tree, and that thing is just really thriving. Looks like it's cooled off from 84 earlier today when I was setting up to 78. So I thought I'd show you some of the stuff that I carried down to Savannah. Um, this was pretty much the complete uh, kit that was in the, this tote that's over here. Uh, and the other one I had a first aid kit, um, which I do not have uh, on the table, but it was just your standard first aid kit. As a matter of fact, you've seen part of it in the first video, the little white box. This is a tent light by Carity uses four AA batteries and uh, use an LED bulb in there or LED sensor or, or whatever that, that little thing is, the diode. Uh, but it's a, um, uh, it's a good little tent light. I've had it for a long time, but I uh, got it at Walmart, um, fairly cheap. Next item, lighter fluid and charcoal. I just wanted to make sure that I had the ability to, if I was in a state park and wanted to grab some some home cooking going on on a grill that I could do that and it would be you know no problem so I made sure I kept that kind of stuff in the back of the car or in my in my little closet area that I had next item are it's a series of little towels I actually had a couple of shams and uh, a, a like a micro towel but uh, these are very similar to that. Um, we had bought those and uh, they had, you know, Ginger had carried them on her, some of her trips and they worked real well for her. And so, you know, I got some new ones, but these are pretty much like the ones that I carried down to Savannah. I had two, two large ones and a small one. It's like a hand towel, um, but that was these. I definitely recommend some sort of little light absorbent towel like this because I mean, you never know when you may need it. Okay, the next thing that I carried that I use that first night and that I typically carry it you know with me everywhere is my little isopro um, rocket um, stove from MSR uh, I really like this thing it breaks down into the two components here um, you'll hear it depressurize just a little there's the two components uh, just screws right on you can buy these in any big box store uh, you can get them online I think 
but um uh, they i just like them they they compact down i number them with my name and so i know you know how how long it takes me to go through them and and uh you know so i kind of keep track of it with that and you can feel by the weight okay i know that this one is there's probably about a third left in it and i would go ahead and throw a new one in and uh, i always bring these home and recycle them and i've actually wondered if they could be used to make some sort of neat little you know bushcraft gadget or something like that but um i do like my little msr rocket stove so there there that is that's the striker for it i don't know if you can see in there it's it's kicking out a little tiny blue electric spark uh it works okay i usually have some sort of lighter or a match or something on me uh and then lately flint and steel i've not tried to light that with flint and steel yet but that might be kind of fun but uh all this stuff packs down inside of this little case and so i really have enjoyed having that because it's light it's small uh it's not a big deal and it will get hot water uh really fast you can use it with that military cook kit uh, that I like to use a lot. And so here's my little stainless steel bowl uh, that I have. It's just a little mixing bowl, but it's lightweight, stainless steel. And then I've got, of course, there's the canteen cup, the lid. I've got an extra little pot holder from a Boy Scout setup. My long um, spoon, it's really not that long, but uh, I've got my Camillus knife. And then I have an old, um, a uh, old hobo tool which is it's okay it got me through it for a few years uh, i actually prefer that case tool that uh, i have in my pocket right now as a matter of fact let me see if i can fish that thing out look at that see i told you i carried i love this thing this i love this thing i get looked at all the time when i break it out but the kids come up to me and the old guys come up to me and say well where'd you get that at and they really like it you know and the kids want to see it and uh you know i i I think the guys, I think guys like it. I actually think girls would like it, but it is a little heavy. Um, I do EDC this uh, off and on, um, especially if I'm carrying a pouch or something like that. But um, I didn't have it when I went down to Savannah. That's a new, new little thing that I'd gotten. But so you see, I've got, I've got my little canteen cup in a bowl, and and then uh, I actually have my, uh, another canteen with my stove uh, on the bottom of it. And uh, I know I showed you guys a lot of this stuff in that first video, but um, you know this is this is what I carried that first trip down to Savannah. I stayed on campus some, and I camped a little bit, and I just tried to, you know, enjoy the situation. I I wasn't really happy about being, you know, isolated from my my family and my wife, but um, you know, I mean, it, it was it was a an adventure to go down there and do that, and I was glad to get to do it. And I, after I got through uh, down there, I was down there for seven months, um, two semesters. And after I got done, I, I said, you know, there's a better way to do this so that I don't have to just basically abandon my family. And and so, I, you know, that's kind of what the path I'm on now. Uh, there is the a steel water bottle that I use. It's been a pretty good steel water bottle. They gave this out at the uh, nursing education uh, function that they had. And they gave my wife one, and she she brought it home to me and said, "I know you like steel um, uh, cookware, and so this is a neat, neat little steel bottle. It's got a brass ring on it, and it's got the uh, silicone stopper, which was getting a little loose. So I backed it with plastic water bottles. I cut them out in the shape of the gasket, and made it so that it it gives me a tighter seal. And I mean, you can't crank on this thing." But, um, you know, it keeps it from where, it'll, uh, where it will leak now. And um, that's actually a, a pretty cool little thing. It's kind of getting kind of beat up. I carry it in that haversack I've got. All right. And so, of course, there's a man cave bag. I won't open that up, but you guys have seen that um, several times now. I did not have this bag, but I did have a similar setup that had probably 90% of the same stuff in it. And then, of course, you've got to have baby wipes. I mean, these things... And whoever is smart enough to hoard a supply of these things up when the apocalypse happens is going to be a rich individual. All right, so then there's this. And I love this stuff. This is the uh, Sportsman's Max. Uh, I like the size of it, right? It goes into my little EDC bag or it goes into my haversack. 
or in my backpack right on one of those um, pouches like the uh, magazine pouches it it really you can go put it right in your pocket you got some bug repellent on you if you need it because what typically happens with with what i do is we're out all day and then right toward the end of the day or early in the morning um, you know the bugs really start kicking and so it's nice to be that guy who has some bug repellent um, i do carry a knife in the trunk with my gear um, with my camping stuff i i you know i don't carry it on my person unless i've got my my concealed weapons permit i know that that you you know a lot of uh states are kind of funny about what you're allowed to have but i think if you looked at in context of what the stuff is in the places that i frequent i think that i could make a case for i'm a camper and so i'm, I'm not running around brandishing this in a school or in a public space i don't open carry my survival knife you know um, but i do i do carry it this very handy tool to have because it's it, it gives me the ability to to do fine work and heavy work this is a good medium sized knife for me uh it's got a hammer pommel on it that you can use to drive intent stakes or crack nuts or i mean you name it right it's this is a good solid rat tail tang knife and the the leather is really um you know i've got it really conditioned up so that it is you know very su supple it is not you know this hard crunchy leather that they send which is fine i, I mean i think it's great um but i just like this knife is well broke in now and i have re um reground my blade to a 40 degree grind from their original um, grind which i i'm not sure exactly what it is but it's much thicker than what this is and i've got this more um honed down or ground down to uh what you would use as a maybe a, a really hefty um hunter's knife or or um you know something along those lines but it is a 40 degree grind and um you know i've got this this uh sheath that i showed you in the first video and it's a crk sheath you know they include a striker and a, a whetstone and a ferro rod and then it's got this little steel ring down here which i'm not really a fan of this i think this could probably come off or have it have put a carbiner on it um so that it, you know you have the option of taking it off or on um i moved this i think i told you guys that it was here i got into a kayak one afternoon and the the knife popped the rivet for this and so i moved it down so that it's not so likely to pop because i carry this scout carry my belt goes through here and so this is just really to retain the knife all right so this is the food bucket right and I, as a matter of fact i probably had the uh backpackers backpackers pantry uh red beans and rice the night i was down there now i know earlier in the day i had the um the uh, pad thai noodles right that's the um the rice noodles in the peanut sauce but i know for a fact that i had that and then i had these red beans and rice and they were pretty good now i did carry some stuff like you know scrambled eggs and uh, there's another scrambled egg and then i like these 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 are single serve um, tuna creations those are real good and then um, of course the ever popular spam um, i carry some oysters in there ham salad i don't know if you can see that there's a ham salad um uh, squid calamari smoked oysters this is a um, cold smoked trout i like that a lot that's really good stuff that's upside down sorry about that uh this is actually the stuffed calamari and that is really good it's in a tomato sauce my wife hates it but i love it and then um some smoked oyster uh smoked mussels i mean you know and then here's a bag of granola and so you know i mean it's just it's can of tuna can of chicken it's it's you know camp food um it's what i carry down and i just made sure that i had enough on me kind of like i've got right now there's probably four or five days worth of worth of uh light eating in there all right so you can see you know when i come into an area to camp when the car when i'm using the car um i want to have just enough food to make sure that i don't have to run into town three or four times to pick up things or i have to get ice or i'm having to cook 
I like the convenience of the um, the jaw type things that just add uh, water. Um, meals, they're they're convenient. They don't taste too bad. Um, they're you know adequate amount of food, especially you know. All right, I'm a big guy. I like to eat, and it's a two serving pouch, so that is definitely plenty of food. And if I have someone along, like you know my brother or my wife, there's enough in that pouch that we can split it and each still have a fair amount of food. And so, you know, that's, those, those kind of things are my favorite, my favorite to buy. Um, you know, that and the, uh, what we call the 10 fish buffet that I showed you. It's basically, uh, I saw an, an episode of Anthony Bourdain where he'd gone to Spain. They had the game on and um, they were, they were uh, in a tapas bar. And what the, the deal was with that episode was all the seafood came from that city right there. The, all the fish that was, it was all tinned. And um, you know, canned like sardines and I mean all that stuff I just showed you, right? Basically the same thing. But they had the cannery there in that town. And so on the big soccer day, uh, they would all gather at the, the little tavern or the tapas bar. And, um, and, and, and this place was not, this was, they were like, you know, just normal people. This was not a big city or anything like that. It was very um, rustic and rural feeling, um, which I love. Right? I live out in that, so I love it. And um, uh, but they they what they did was they opened up all the the, the canned seafood on the on the uh, the counter there, and the guy old guy went down the line squeezing lemon in and and putting in fresh herbs and cilantro and tomato and onions and. And uh, they had the little plates and you went down the line and you basically got a few things out of each can and as they the cans emptied up the the owner would put new cans out and and um, we saw that and I was like I was like that's the way to do that I like that's a great idea right there and so you know now we don't have a cannery in our town but there's no reason we can't enjoy that same kind of you know same kind of procedure it's uh, 15 to 12 and the temperature is 75 degrees. So it's cooled off uh, about 10 degrees since 6 p.m. this afternoon. And um, it's, it's kind of turned into a nice night. It's clear. You can see the humidity is up real high. It's a real thick fog. You can see it through the lights over here. And, and uh, you know, when I stepped off the edge of the bushes here, you could see it around the, uh, the street light. And um, so, it's very humid out here right now, but um, this is a nice little breeze, so it actually should not be too bad. The the bugs have kind of quit biting. I've got my my final um, uh, no see them stick burning, um, so hopefully that'll keep the bugs out. It's got just a little bit of smoke around the area, and uh, Prudence looks like she's she's over there, kind of ready to sack out. She's She's uh, actually she looks like she's okay. It's gonna be a long night out. Uh, it's roughly two o'clock in the morning, and uh, man, she is over there going nuts. She's growling. Uh, I didn't hear anything. She just. Started that business straight up. And... I tell you what, <laughs> must be great not to have to sleep. Well, she has finally laid down. I'm not sure what had her worked up, but she is not even on her pad. Pooh, get on your pad, bud. Get on your pad. Yeah, something's got her attention. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's up with that, but it's probably an armadillo running around in the edge of the bushes or something. But she is, uh, she's determined to let him know stay out of the yard you know that's the one thing I think you guys have heard me say a, a million times out here is how thankful I am to have a 
extra set of ears and nose out here, but um, that can have its drawbacks. Um, she is determined to, you know, let let whatever it is out there know to stay out of the yard. Good morning. It's uh six, uh, roughly six thirty. Sun is just starting to rise. And um, I just checked the temperature on uh, the Weather Channel at 70 degrees. Um, everything is saturated. You can just you can just tell the humidity from yesterday has got everything damp. The fly above me is just coated with with a, a layer of, of mist, and some of the stuff over here has got it going on. I'm sure the dog is slightly damp. I feel slightly damp. Um, even though it did not rain anymore last night. Now we've got um, rain coming in again uh, by 4. Uh, it's a 50% chance right around 4 or 5. And so, get my arm covered up. It's a little cool out here. I mean, I'm not uncomfortable. Um, you know, I got on t shirt and shorts. And uh, I'm zipped up to about, I guess, probably about my waist or, or so. But um, it's just, the main thing is, it's just, everything is very uh, wet um, out here. You can kind of just feel it. And it's, it's the humidity off of the tropical storm has really got things um, saturated. But... Still a pretty quiet night. I mean, it, you know, the dog got up once or twice. Uh, or whatever that was in the side of the, the yard was, you know, kind of keeping her agitated a little bit. But I'm assuming it was an armadillo um, or a possum. Although, uh, typically, she'll want to investigate those things. Uh, I didn't hear the coyotes but one time early on and and that's i think you guys saw that um and then i don't know what that was you know getting her kind of she was grumbling a lot um there right, right around 2 a.m this morning how you doing over poo doing all right how'd you sleep she says i didn't i was up all night guarding you it looks like it's going to be a, a beautiful day I'm going to lay here just a little while longer, and I'm going to get up and and uh, maybe cruise on down to the house and get a little breakfast and let this stuff kind of dry out before I start trying to put it back up. You know, you don't want to put any of this stuff up damp because, it, I mean, it definitely will mildew you. There's a, a murder of crows over here, and I think they are mobbing a red-tailed hawk. And I don't know that I can get close enough to... To let you guys hear that because they as soon as they saw me they they didn't know if they wanted to run from me or continue harassing the hawk but I tried to be as low-key as about as I could but you can hear them there we're fussing man they're fussing there's probably 20 of them over here Well, there, I guess they took off, but <laughs> everybody's wanting to know what was going on. Everybody was coming up here. Yeah, they meant business. There was a lot of them. Oh, blueberries are looking good this morning. Rooster. Don't eat all my blueberries now, buddy. Oh, he's loving them. 
Well, that does it for this episode of 52 Friday Nights. Thanks for joining me. Next time, we're going to be camping out in a Jeep Wrangler. I hope you'll be there. And so from the great state of Georgia and the Hog Mountain Ridge, we'll see y'all later.